Oh, there we go. She's kind of like having a big dog, but she doesn't run around and bark. Okay. Tiny house alpaca Cody is a little different from the rest. Not least because of her fancy dress wardrobe. Cody want treats? I dress her up at, at different holidays, um, you know, and they just, people just love her. We've done New Year's, we've done Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, 4th of July. She's got a whole trunk full of wigs and hats and glasses and all that. Okay, ready? Oh, look how pretty. Cody has always lived indoors with owner and alpaca farmer, Amber. She's almost two years old and she's been primarily a house alpaca. Um, I think there's been three nights that she ever spent out in the barn. At night, I ask her if she's ready to go to bed and she goes right over to the stairway and she, you know, I'll go upstairs and she'll follow me right up the stairs. Uh, and she loves bedtime. Um, she sleeps there all night. In the morning, I do have to carry her down the stairs. Right, Cody? Yes. Life got off to a rough start for Cody, who was born a month early. So when Cody was born, she was only six and a half pounds. Most alpaca babies are 15 to 20 pounds. When the mama gave birth, um, she didn't actually realize she'd given birth and walked away. And twice she almost stepped on the baby. So I picked her up, brought her inside, let mom out with her friends. Her mom didn't even notice that she was gone. Today, she's about 52 pounds. Um, no, most babies at a year and a half, two years old, ha have become mature and they're over 100 pounds. Having hand reared Cody since birth, Amber has a close relationship with the alpaca. She's the closest thing I'm going to have to a daughter. Cody and I have a very strong bond. I mean, obviously she depends on me to take care of her. And, you know, anytime we go outside, she's right on my, right on my hip. Today, there's a very special delivery on the farm. Uh, we are going to help an alpaca mama give birth. So we've got a good start. Uh, what you want are two feet and a nose. And breathing is always good. <laughs> okay, we're almost out. Here we go. There we go. And now that he's on the ground, he's moving around, he's, um, you know, he's breathing, he's, and Bert, Cody was breathing, but uh, there wasn't all this activity. She just was kind of there and weak. Right, Cody? I know. I know you was a good helper. I see, you helped. Yes. She's enriched my life beyond what I can have ever thought. It's unlikely that she'll ever grow to full size or live with the herd, but Cody's story has won her a fan base. I started putting up pictures, and people started really getting into following and cheering her on. And um, she actually ended up on the news because we weren't sure if she was the smallest baby born in Colorado. And a lot of people took a personal interest. She's even the subject of a children's book. Because she's so small and so different from everybody else, I wanted to use that to help reach kids who might feel different kids who feel left out, kids who are bullied, kids who have special needs. I have a client who has a niece who has dwarfism. She can really relate with Cody being teeny tiny and feeling like she doesn't quite fit in. And the, the message of Cody's book is everybody has something that makes them different. If being different is who you really are, then that's a wonderful thing.